we're also absolutely thrilled that the one and only Caroline Lucas MP, the sanest voice in the House of Commons, um, has agreed to join us to help launch our campaign. Caroline, good evening. How lovely to see you. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, well, thank you. Um, we've just been hearing from our, our one and only Green Party County Councillor, um, Dr. Pete Sudbury, um, who, uh, who had the audacity to invite you along to our little meeting tonight. And we were thrilled and somewhat uh, terrified when you said that you would come along. <laughs> Caroline um, cut her political teeth at uh, Oxfordshire County Council uh, and served there between uh, 1993 and 1997. Um, I think it, it was your first election <clears throat> success. Um, and were you one of two Greens in, in those days? I was on my own for the first year and a half and then thankfully there was a by-election and Sushila Dahl joined me at that point, I'm very glad to say. Wonderful. Well, we're really hoping, I was just explaining that, that um, I'm sure you will know that we had this uh, uh, seismic um, shift in control in South Oxfordshire at the last district council elections and, and um, five, there are six Green Party representatives now, five of us in the official Green Group on the, on the administration. Um, some of us serve in the cabinet, others um, have other worlds that they're talking about this evening. Um, so we really feel we're making a difference. Um, we, we, despite some of the difficulties of dealing with the Conservative central government and the Conservative county council, um, we are certainly um, uh, you know, working very hard to, 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 make, to make it clear that a vote, a green vote is not a wasted vote in local politics. And I think that's really important. Um, so Caroline, it'd be great to hear from you in this short time you have available to maybe share some of your thoughts or your, your, your memories of your time on the, uh, the County Council. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, Andrea, and uh, thanks again to, uh, to, to Pete for, for asking me, and it's really fantastic to um, see all of you here uh, this evening, so thanks so much. And I guess all I wanted to do really was to say a few words to kind of celebrate what it feels like you're already achieving, um, because marking success matters, and then to look a little bit ahead at, at some of the challenges ahead, and, and yeah, and to reflect a little bit about about starting my political career in, in Oxford and Oxfordshire. And I was just gonna reflect maybe that, that one of your biggest success, successes is modeling how politics can be done differently and how cooperation actually can get things done. It's really great to see Greens and Lib Dems working together to challenge, what is it, 16 years of the Conservatives being in power and together demanding change, You know, taking a stand on everything from active travel to, to protecting rural communities. And I think Councillor Pete is an example of, of what a difference having just one Green in the room can make. And by working with the Lib Dems during the elections, as well as on councils, I think there's the potential to get more Greens elected as well. Um, but I just had a sort of little story about, about the importance of keeping the faith, I suppose, because I know sometimes it can all feel like it's such an uphill battle and we never make as much success as fast as we would like. And, there's a little story that I sometimes think back of in terms of, of winning Brighton Pavilion. And it starts with remembering uh, someone called Jay Beale. And in 1979, Jay Beale stood for Parliament for the Ecology Party in Brighton Pavilion, and they got 638 votes. It was around 1.5% of the vote. And you can just imagine what Jay Beale's friends and family would have said about that. You know, what a waste of time. What is the point? But the wisdom was that you can only at the time was you could only get elected if you joined Labour or the, or the Tories that you'll never beat the system. But in one way, winning at that point wasn't the point. It was to stand up for your beliefs and to give others a chance to vote for what they believe in, a sign that there could be a, a better way if others followed your lead. So then in 1992, Ian Brodie had another go in Brighton Pavilion. By then it was the Green Party and he won 963 votes. And in 1997, Pete West got 1,249 votes. And then Keith Taylor took it on and got 3,000 votes and doubled it to 9,000 votes. And then in 2010, I doubled our vote again and won the seat. And since then, I've been re-elected three more times with bigger majorities each time because when Greens get elected, people tend to like what they see. And when we began, no one, uh, not one single person thought we could win the seat in, in, in Brighton, but trying was the right thing to do. And when we began, there were lots of questions as well about what difference just one Green MP could make. And I think we, what you have already experienced, you know, with in, 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 in your time in, in South Oxfordshire is that never underestimate the power of having a Green in the room. And 
yeah, the little lesson to me, I suppose, does go back from, from Oxfordshire County Council. And I vividly remember one particular debate. It was about a special school um, which the council was trying to close. And I've been working really closely with the parents who didn't want it to close. And I remember vividly sort of standing up in the, in the council chamber quite early on to argue on behalf of the amassed parents in the gallery that this local school should not be forced to close. And I did my best to kind of convey their, their passion and, and their belief uh, and why it should stay open. And, you know, the vote kind of went 69 in favor and one against, and that was just me, the one, one against. And so feeling very deflated, I, I went out to speak to the, to the parents afterwards, but I was blown away by their reaction because they kind of said to me, they, they never really expected the decision to go the other way. They wanted someone though, to give them a voice. They wanted to hear their views expressed on the floor of the council chamber. They wanted the other councillors to have to take those views seriously. Um, and that meant something to them. And so I went away from that feeling that, you know, that change doesn't happen in a moment, that it's made up of lots of, of small moments. And we may never know what role we played in making change happen, but trying and doing the right thing and raising our voices and standing up for others it's always it always matters and yeah again thinking back to my time in 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 Oxfordshire in 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 93 when I was elected um Theo my my eldest son was just three months old at the time and so he was strapped to my to my front as we went canvassing and, and leafleting and if you can borrow a baby I really recommend it because it's a fantastic way of having those there's uh, conversations on the doorstep where it's a real icebreaker. But the sort of moral of that little story that I wanted to tell in a sense was that it was hugely difficult to combine being a counsellor with having a job and looking after a small baby. So I was lucky enough to ask some friends if they would be able to help me look after him. Um, and, and the role that they played was, was just so valuable. I literally couldn't have done it without them. And so I guess from that, I just reflect that it's teams that win elections, not individuals. And, and even when we have won a particular seat, it is the team around, around Pete and around me and around everyone else that really helps us to be able to sustain the, the challenge that, that being a, a councillor is. Um, and so it is that sense, I think, of being prepared to look outside sometimes, even of the local party, to work with the wider green movement, and recognizing that even if sometimes our local parties can seem quite small, they are part of that much bigger green movement. You know, it's all the members and supporters, the campaigning and conservation groups, the scientists, the researchers, the marathon runners, the cat rescuers, the eco bloggers, uh, the artists and writers, the people who, who recycle and buy fair trade and all of those things. And when we add all of that together, then we can be a really big and, and powerful force. Uh, after being on the County Council um, for, for four years. Then, then they changed the, um, the electoral system for the European elections, and there was the opportunity to stand for the Southeast region in 1999 and be elected to the European Parliament. And I guess I was just going to reflect that, that the kind of cooperative politics that you are practicing here in South Oxfordshire was very much the way in which the European Parliament uh, worked, and how refreshing it was, you know, to, to work to try to find compromises. I was really struck how in British politics, the word compromise is a really dirty word. You know, if you've compromised, you've sold out. Whereas in the European Parliament, actually finding a compromise whereby everyone could be happy with something that they got from it was actually seen as a rather more kind of noble um, endeavor. And, um, and it was a, a really good learning point, I think for me to recognize that it is important to reach out to others. If we're going to get things done, then we can't wait till we're majorities on every single council and a majority government. We're gonna to have to work with others. And I think, yeah, I think that 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 experience of, of working with others in the European Parliament was, was hugely important. And then fast forward to um to 2010 and, and getting elected to um to the Westminster Parliament, which is a very different kettle of fish and 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 kind of harder to work, I guess, cross-party, although not, in, not not impossible. And Although what you see on the television is the kind of adversarial, um, you know, prime minister's questions and things like that, actually an awful lot of good work happens on select committees, which are made up of all different parties. And, and that's where an awful lot of good scrutiny happens and where you can find common 
common positions and, and, and common views and, and, and so forth. So um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm hugely grateful to the, to the wider local party in Brighton and Hove, and, and of course they've been brilliant in, in, in now becoming the, um, the uh, minority administration on, on the council in Brighton and Hove as well. And I think there's a real, a real interest in seeing how we can bring that synergy to bear to see what, what we can do when you've got a minority green administration at the same time as you've got a green MP and how we can, how we can make that work um, really for, for, for all of us. So I guess just looking forward and the importance of the of the elections coming up, um, you know, I just think that it is more important than ever that Greens are standing in these elections, that we are really offering a fresh alternative to the tired politics of the of the other parties. And it is about giving people a choice, you know, that the choice is to live in a world limited by the climate emergency or a world where there's a just transition to a future that's liberated from, from that. I was really struck by the Scottish Greens, their election slogan is vote as if the future depends upon it, uh, which I really like. And of course, in, in ways that can't be overstated, it, it is certainly true that, that our future does depend on the way votes happen. And so here in Oxfordshire, I think what you're doing now, every time you knock on a door or help someone print leaflets or look after a candidate's small child whilst they speak with voters, all of that is making this better future that we know is possible become a little bit closer. And as I said earlier, we, we never really know how our actions contribute to the change that's coming. You know, you may, you may be the one who sparks something in the next Greta Thunberg, or you may be the one who just by listening to someone with kindness and hope gives them a reason to vote green one day. And that's the vote that wins enough seats to take control of the council, which then a few years later leads to the next green MP being elected and so on. So my message tonight simply is that every single thing you can do makes a difference. And that's why I'm incredibly excited about what I hope we can achieve in these forthcoming elections. I think I, I understand there's nine seats that you're, that you're, that you're standing in. Uh, so that's uh, potentially nine county councillors going out and advocating for our, our green vision. And it's the supporters of those candidates having conversations with voters giving them hope about things like better train links between Oxford and Cambridge or how to revitalize the high streets from Abingdon to Whitney. It's hundreds upon hundreds of leaflets being delivered that let people know our plans about an improved response to flooding as championed by Ian Middleton and about services for young people across Oxfordshire as Andrew Prosser has been campaigning for tirelessly and for which Rosie Rawl is such a passionate advocate as well. I guess elections are just such a crucial opportunity for us to, to tell our story and to hear from voters. And even in these really terrible COVID restricted times, we really do have to get out there and do what we do best, which is I think inspiring others with our belief in, in what's possible. So I wish you every success in the coming uh, weeks and, um, and, and hope to join you again when, when Pete is no longer a lone voice. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline, for those inspirational words.